Hello, I'm here today with Mo Fullerton, who is a real Renaissance woman. She's a director, a writer, she works in theatre and television, and recently completed a week here with Save the Lap Dance for Me, which was a huge success. Mo, tell us a wee bit about it. Oh, well, I got the idea from um, an article I read in the Scotsman uh, a couple of years back which said that the Scottish executive had, had commissioned uh, an inquiry into how best to protect um, the young women who worked in the um, lap dancing venues and uh, it, it just made me laugh so much because, you know, sort of 18 months later and 150 grand uh, spent, they, <laughs> they had come up with something really ludicrous and, and unenforceable. And um, it just sparked um, an idea in my head, and, and that was the germ for the yes. play. So. And um, you had a terrific audience. We did. I think they might have been expecting to see a lap dance. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was most heartening. Yeah, I, mean, I think we were sold out by the yeah. Friday and Saturday. It was terrific. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you choose a subject which is quite serious. Mm. And then you give it this marvellous comic twist. Yeah. Yes, I like, is. I like to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I suppose um, I'm, I'm from the school a bit similar to you in some ways of let's entertain the audience, but let's say something at the same time. Yeah. And I hate preaching to the audience and, um, you know, I don't profess to be a great writer, but I, I think I'm a good entertainer. Yeah. And uh, so that... He's that, a very good writer. <laughs> so... I, I, and I suppose as well, just the, the, the years of work I've done with doing things like Diary of Foam, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, 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 a, it's territory that I feel comfortable with. And you I, were the first person to do Diary of Foam in Scotland. That's right, yeah. In fact, you did female parts with Juliet Kansas. That's exactly right. That was, yeah. the, that, that was the very first time Ford you performed in Scotland and, and uh, Juliet and I did it at the Tron Theatre. Yeah. Um, in the Victorian bar. Exactly. It was, it, I think it was very early days in the Tron's history. We, we didn't yeah. even have the theatre then. Um, so it was one of the first productions and uh, there was clearly a taste for it. I mean, we, we got and you've got that thing in common with food that you like to see as somebody's turned in their head. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, that's, uh, I, you know, if, if I look back at what I've done over the years, there's definitely a pattern of that. Yeah. And um, so this this uh, this subject matter seemed to to fit. Uh, I thought I could I could have a lot of fun with it, but at the same time, really, I wasn't attempting to answer all the questions, yeah. but but raise a lot of questions yeah. um, that that surrounded that issue and, yeah. and, and also how, how these um, inquiries are handled, you know, and yeah. buried sometimes. So. Yeah. Now tell me, you've had the most incredible success with the last play you did here. With Casablanca. Yes. <laughs> Tell us the story of Casablanca. Okay. Well, Casablanca it really started out because of you doing the classic cuts. Mm -hmm. And I do remember saying to you one day, would you consider if we took a great movie mm -hmm. and did a classic cut, did, did the classic cut treatment on it? And one of the movies with great dialogue, with great with a great script. And uh, you said, okay. Um, I'm prepared to be convinced and uh, so off I went and uh, Casablanca was the result and, um, and, and, and the idea was, um, I, I started off thinking about something much bigger, I think I was going to do Gordon of Khartoum or something like that, <laughs> something fairly epic but I, I, I think the, um, the uh, National Theatre of Bread had tackled that sort of thing, yeah. they did Zulu which was which was obviously an influence. So I, I decided to go more for something which I thought had a terrific script and we could have fun staging it. Yeah. And, and um, uh, Casablanca just fitted the bill perfectly. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic and movie. And after it played here or more, it went to the Tron? After, after here, we did, we did a run at the Tron mm -hmm. and then we went to the Edinburgh Festival mm -hmm. and then we toured Britain. <laughs> Yeah. And then we went back to the Edinburgh Festival and then we went to the Barbados Festival. Yeah. And now it's going to Paris, Paris, Paris. So, Glad so you lead so, the way. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> so exciting. That really is for everyone. I mean, and that started here in 210 
no, 2010. Yeah. <laughs> that long time. 2010. So this is like, yeah, three, three years three later years and it's still, still having girl. this life. Yeah. yeah. And it's going it's to the oldest theatre in Paris. It's going to Théâtre des Jazés in the Place de la République, which I don't know if it's the oldest, it's certainly one of the oldest theatres uh -huh. in Paris. Um, uh, 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 you know, it goes back to uh, certainly the early 1800s, mm -hmm. and because uh, I know a lot of the apparently uh, the Toulouse Lautrec and various people like that. Yeah. So, so it's it's a great privilege and a great honour to to play somewhere like that. Now you are an unusual person in one regard in Scotland, in that you balance a theatre career and television career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think um, I, I made a decision quite early on when we saw the axe hanging over Wildcat and Borderline. And I thought, well, and, we, and, and, and as a freelancer, it's, it's, as we both know, many of us know, it's, it's difficult to make a living. Um, so I thought I would, I would I'd learn how to do film and television. And what happened was, I was doing Mr. Abufo with Robbie Coltrane. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, was a, that was a British premiere, in fact, yeah. it hadn't been performed here before. and and. Uh, some people came along to see it from the BBC and decided this would make a great Easter program. Mm. So they filmed it in four parts to go out over Easter, because mm. it's the comic mysteries. And uh, I watched what they were doing and, I, uh, and how they filmed it, and I thought, I, I actually think I could do that myself, probably yeah. better. <laughs> so right. so I went, was lucky enough to get on the BBC Drama Directors course, mm. which was designed for people who work in the theatre who have experience with actors mm. and scripts but need the technical side demystified. So um, so hence since then I've been able to work in both yeah. medium, which is what, is what have you been doing the most recently in television? Uh, I've been doing a great series called Scott and Bailey, oh, which yeah. is set in Manchester with two terrific female leads, Leslie Sharp and Saran Jones. And uh, I've I've done lots of episodes of that sort of fact been in Manchester for a long time. Pretty, you did Rebus. And Rebus, yeah, and Rebus was great. Did, yeah, and and Taggart, Taggart to Glasgow. And um, yeah, it's a shame actually because neither Taggart or Rebus is happening at the moment. We don't yeah. seem to have had a replacement. So yeah. uh, hopefully there'll be some more drama have coming you up. Other things in the pipeline? Uh, it's one or two things <laughs> that may or may not come to pass. Not really but, uh, to well, not divulge just yeah. in case they don't come to pass, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully yeah. there'll be there'll be something else coming up. Hopefully I'll come back here. I love coming here. Yeah. Or I will. Well, of course you will. <laughs> um, if you've got any friends in Paris in April, or you fancy a little spring visit, Casablanca is going to be on there. Thanks, Mo. Oh, thanks, David. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Paris! <laughs>